Hello, this is the Bible in fewer words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 74, chapters 22 and 23. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. We have a guest today. We do. And that guest is Objectively Dan, the creator and host of Truth Wanted and the host of Atheist Community of Austin. We are so happy to have him with us. We are. Dan, do you want to tell us just a little bit about your main day job? And then we'll catch up at the end of the show with more. Yeah, for sure. So uh, my main day job is nothing special. But uh, outside of my main day job, I am uh, a host at the Atheist Community of Austin, uh, which is a nonprofit organization that produces some content that you might be familiar with if you know the Atheist Experience or Talk Heathen. Um, when we're a part of that network, uh, I am a host on Talk Heathen. I'm also uh, a host and the creator of a show called Truth Wanted. Uh, it's a weekly call-in show, and uh, we talk about all kinds of stuff. We do Christianity, but we also do UFOs and spiritual healings and magic rocks, you know, whatever whatever you got going on. That's that's why we call it Truth Wanted. We want to know people's truth. So uh, that's what I do. Well, that sounds pretty exciting and wild. Yeah. Exciting and wild is is putting it mildly, I'd say. <laughs> Last week, I had a guy call in and say, not only is the Holy Spirit real, but helps him do crimes. And, oh, wow. you know, I just hear fun stuff like that all the time. <laughs> huh. It's really great. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. So we um we just do this little podcast here. We're we're reading the Bible, and hopefully the Bible in fewer words. Yeah. Okay. Do we need kind of an intro to what we're read, talking about today, Steve? I don't think so. There's going to be uh, going to be mixed. There's going to be some good stuff, and then there's going to be some pretty awful stuff. It starts off well, though. All right. You want to go ahead and do that? Okay. This is chapter twenty-two, verse one. If you see your brother's ox or sheep go astray, bring them back to him. That is nice. It is. That's a good one. That's yeah. like, you know, when people talk about what's the good stuff in the Bible, that's one of them. Bringing your sheep back to your friends. Yeah. You know, it doesn't apply to my life, but somebody out there's got some sheep that needs bringing back. So yeah, it's a, ni- it's a, a good... nice thought. Yeah. Yeah. If he loses something, return it to him. Sure. And, More nice. And if his donkey or ox falls down, lift it up again. That seems to be a little harder to do. I'm not sure I want to be lifting it off. (laughs) Well, (laughs) help it out, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Hey, Dan, I think you should take verse five and go on. Verse five? Okay, I can do that. Uh, You gave me the really fun one. By the way, let me just say this. When you guys contacted me and said you wanted to do Deuteronomy, I was like, (laughs) oh, great. They threw me, you know, all the boring stuff. But you actually gave me a juicy passage here because this chapter in particular is cited for not great reasons. And one of the reasons is for this verse right here, Mm -hmm. which is uh, verse five, which says women may not wear men's clothes and vice versa. Whoever does so is an abomination to God. So, you know, transphobes were around even back in Bible times, (laughs) (laughs) which is, which is great. But like, here's the thing, right? If you gave somebody, if you didn't know anything about ancient history, right, and I came up to you on the street wearing what the average ancient Judean wore, right, you would think I was dressing like a woman yeah. because it, they're basically dresses with, like, belts, uh-huh. right? Like, that's kind of the fit. So it's like this is just, in my opinion, a great example of a book written by people yeah. <laughs> and, and it talks about the cultures and customs of a time period and shouldn't be informing your worldview, you know, Two, three thousand years later, but that's just my opinion. Steve, so I don't know. Yeah. And and it's so comfortable, you know. Yeah, right. I mean, of... we should bring it back. To <laughs> that's be right. I think some people have. Yeah. You know, they've got those kind of kilts that you can stick your tools in. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm down for it. You know. I thought but, you might. Um, be. Yeah. All right. Are you ready to take on? You know, kind of just a nice another nice verse. Yeah. Another. Yeah. Verse, more nice stuff. Here, yeah, I could do the next one here. This is verse six, which says. If you find a bird's nest with a mother bird and her eggs or young birds, don't take them all. Take the young birds, but let the mother go. So basically, you can kidnap some birds, 
But if they're eggs, that's a no-no. Uh, and you also can't take all of them. So kidnapping is okay for s- some groups of animals, but you just can't have them all. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. that's what I'm seeing there. So That does seem like uh, the mother's going to lay more eggs, I guess. And yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So something. There's something there. <laughs> <laughs> if you do that, all will be well with you and you'll live a long life. You're right. I missed that part. So, like, <laughs> that's an interesting little side note because – is that a promise? Yes, yeah, or is there is that... to it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, so how, does this mean the more eggs you get, the longer you live? Is there like a like a formula I could follow here, or is this just like I don't know? I don't know what this means. I don't know. Just let the mother go. I think maybe let maybe, them, I maybe think... it's just the thought that counts. Oh, really? But yeah, you're being kind of nice there and leaving the uh, the mom. Well, if. If I'm going to be uh, punished or rewarded based on my thoughts, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. When you're building a new house, put a wall on the edge of the roof so you won't be to blame if someone falls off. You know? Good so idea. This yeah. raises a lot of questions to me. Were they building roofs without walls? Like, I, how did you do that? How well, do you build a roof if there's no walls? Oh, no, no. I think they want just a little edge. Put a little, little edge. Wall. it's just a little edge so that if you're slipping off, like off a metal roof, you're, you're going gotcha. to stop. Well, I think they also um, built flat roofs at the time so that the roof oh. itself was a living space. Okay. So kind of like, so like pizza huts are like against the book of Deuteronomy. In this <laughs> Probably. Sense, right? yeah. like the roofs are kind of sticking out pretty far and I don't know, that could, that could open yourself up to lawsuits. Yeah. yeah. And then we have one last little thing here. Verse 12 says, put fringes on the four corners of your garments. Cool. Yeah. All right. Will do. (laughs) Again, that's something where if I did that today, I think people would think that's a girlish or womanly thing to do. So it might, you know, break, break some other rules there. So, so I don't, I don't know. Hard, hard to know what to do based on what we've seen so far. Okay. So Steve, Mm. you went to the fringe one, but how about um, nine and 10? Oh, did I skip something? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're right. And those are important. I think so. Okay. Well, you take those. Okay. When you plant a vineyard, don't use more than one kind of seed or your grapes will be defiled. Yeah. Really? Right. Don't. Okay. I will keep that in mind next time I plant a vineyard. <laughs> hey, you know, so... my brother planted a vineyard. Yeah. Did he it make seeds? Um, I think he probably did mix these yeah. because I think Ooh. he thinks that that will create a Ooh. blend. I he got some bad wine. news for your brother because, <laughs> you know, the Bible says yeah. he can't be doing that. Yeah. That's naughty. The grapes will be defiled. Okay. Right. And, and Dan, why don't you take the 10? Other one. Yeah. Yeah, sure. It says don't plow with an ox and a donkey together. So maybe I guess – Oxes and donkeys just don't get along together. <laughs> that's exactly like, what I said, but I don't know be some that for practical a fact. reasons. I don't know that either. Uh huh. That's that's beyond my jurisdiction. So <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have any idea on this one. Okay, so now we get into something entirely different. Yes, maybe the woman should read this. Okay, yeah, good idea. If a man gets married, has sex with his wife, and then hates her and says, "I took this woman." And when I had sex with her, I found out that she wasn't a virgin. (laughs) Okay. I don't want to go into real specifics here about how he might have figured out that she wasn't a virgin. Yeah. Uh, But I guess he's... We're going to find out here, I think. Yes. Dan, you ready? Uh, No, but I I am here, so we do have to get this done. So let's, let's, let's do it. Then the woman's father and mother will bring the tokens of their daughter's virginity to the city elders and say to them... These are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the cloth in front of the elders. All right. Um, Do you know, have you ever heard of this before, Dan? I definitely have. Um, So my understanding is that uh, basically they had some idea with the, I I guess it's related to the breaking of the hymen, I guess. Yes. Somehow. That's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Like you break the hymen and somehow a little bit of that blood is the evidence. Out. Yeah. And the blood that comes out. Right. That's what it is. And so yes. you get that rag. It says, oh, that's how we know that there's still a virgin, which um, I don't think that's how that works. Again, I I lack the parts. So I'm not I can't tell you firsthand. 
but I'm pretty sure that's not how that works, right? I don't think it's foolproof anyway. No, it's not foolproof uh, because a hymen can be broken by riding a horse or a donkey or an ox. I think. Or a bicycle. Yeah, a bicycle. would you think they probably have more problems with that back then? Than yes. I mean, yeah. my friends aren't riding donkeys every day, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I don't know what they got going on back then, but yeah. Well, the next verses say that if the elders, the elders will chastise the man, I guess if they could find the tokens of the uh, virginity, virginity mm -hmm. then they will chastise the man and make him pay 100 shekels of silver to the wife's father. And the woman shall be the man's wife for the rest of his life. That sounds like a fun time. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you know how people are like, oh, no, the Bible says men and women's roles are equal and that they're both <laughs> created under this. I got like that. You know, I, I look at verses like this. It's like, I don't know if they really kind of thought that because no. there's no real equivalent for young dudes that have had, you know, sex with older women or something. Right. Like for some reason, we have to take care of the girl, I guess. I guess it's the the. The, the pregnancy issue, right? I, I think maybe that's the concern, but you know, it's, it's not Steve a great system. Me, don't try to defend the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, that's true. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to, well, you know, I was a Christian once. So it's like, I'm trying to, you know, putting my Christian hat on uh -huh. how I would really think about this. But yeah. to be honest, there's no good way. I mean, especially in today's world, it just seems pretty silly. Yeah, it does. But the next, the next verses are, are the real killers here. But if the woman's token of virginity cannot be found, so the parents couldn't find that sheet that mm. she bled on a little bit, she will be brought to her father's house and all the men of the city will stone her to death. Oh, because mm -hmm. she has played the whore in her father's house. That is just yeah, not fair. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and um, maybe I, she's the one who rode a bicycle and her hymen broke. And then, you know, the first was a virgin, really. And the first night of her wedding didn't produce that little drop of no, blood. But even, even if this test was foolproof, it was if it was a sure thing, it would still be pretty disgusting. I mean, yes. it would be horrible. Yeah. Well, you know, it does get worse, <laughs> yes. I'm afraid to say. And I know you know this, but uh, it doesn't get any better from here. No, it doesn't. All right, Steve. Okay. If a man has sex with a woman who is married to another man, kill them both. If a man finds an engaged woman in the city and rapes her, stone both of them to death. Okay, do you think we need to stop? Because if you keep going like this, uh, we're just going to have like one horrible thing after another in our brains. A lot of, a lot of killings, a lot mm -hmm. of stonings. It's not, it's not, super, not super fun. This isn't a real, you know... Some people say the Bible's about peace and love, but like this is the literal least peace and love you could possibly get, right? Yes. That's pretty horrific. Mm hmm. So we're on um, 22 now. Uh, I can get it from here. It says if a man has sex with a woman who is married to another man, kill them both. If a man finds an engaged woman in the city, and rapes her, stone them both to death. The woman, because she didn't cry out loudly enough, being in the city, and the man, because he humbled his neighbor's wife. You know, Yikes. yeah. When I first read this one, I can't remember how long ago, it just, I just thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, I was educated. Well, if you're in the city and you cry out, somebody's going to hear you. And I'm going, really? Yeah. <laughs> well that's that is that's that's the thinking here yeah yeah and if it, yeah if you're in the country and you different. scream it's different yeah. mm -hmm. it turns out victim blaming goes way way back you know yeah. i mean this is a pretty good example of that um like for some reason your rape as a woman is your responsibility to bear mm -hmm. uh and that attitude Seems to have not changed for a lot of Christians, uh, you know, 2,000 odd years later, or Jews, I guess, as well. But yeah, uh, yeah not great. Or communities in general. I mean, saying, well, what was the Or Muslims. Wearing? Yeah. Or, you know, like pretty any anything that has the Bible in it as yeah. part of the religion, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, probably shares a similar worldview. <laughs> so this is verse 25. If a man finds an engaged woman in the country and rapes her, 
stone the man to death, but not the woman. Well, so here mm, we go. Very progressive. Yes, very you know. progressive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the woman should not be stoned because no one could hear her cry out in the country. Oh, see, it's not the woman's fault this time because no one can hear her cry out in the country. Everyone knows that. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That is just kooky. I mean, that's just common sense. This, this is biblical justice. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, you want to take the next one? If a man finds a woman who isn't engaged and rapes her, he must pay the father 50 shekels of silver and then marry the woman that he raped. Great. I want to be married yeah. to my rapist. <laughs> right. That That has always been a really bothersome point. Also, apparently there is a cost to doing rape and it's 50 shekels yeah. yes. according to the book. Like uh, that's how much, that's the monetary equivalent of w whatever crime you've done. Uh, so we put a number on it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they actually do that quite a bit in the Bible. The value of a person's life. And, yeah, shekels yeah. about 10 grams. So that's about half a kilogram of silver, probably. I don't know what that'd be worth today. Mm. Not enough, I'll tell you that. No. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so a man must not have sex with his father's wife or discover his father's skirt. Okay, so this we have had before. We haven't had the skirt thing. No. And that's why I left it in. Generally, I, I'm leaving things out that we've covered before in previous episodes. Because, uh, you know, we're trying to make the Bible shorter. Right. Sure. Yeah. But anyway, they I thought it was kind of interesting that they call uh, having sex with your father's wife, I guess, is discovering your father's skirt. I don't know how that works exactly. And not know. necessarily your mother. You know. I don't think your mother counts much. It's always an, an offense to the man. Because the man, right. man owns the woman, whether it's his wife or, or his daughter. Okay, chapter 23. A man with wounded testicles or an amputated penis <laughs> shall not enter God's congregation. Okay, well, poor guy, you know? Yeah. The three whammos, you know, you got a wounded testicle, you got an amputated penis. I just like saying those words, sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can now get into God's congregation. First of all, how would you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> did they go around like pulling yeah. people's pants yeah. down? Like what, yeah. what did they do for this? I don't, yeah. I don't know. Well, it's, it's like, you know, the God, God was really big on circumcision. And it seems like as being a sign of, of being a person being dedicated to God, it seems like a very silly thing to, to insist upon because no, nobody can see that, right? Why not have, uh, you know, a pierced ear? Then you're clearly in the know, group or out. Yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway, there it is in yeah. 23 and in all one. its glory. Yep. What, a, mm -hmm. what a beautiful verse. Yeah. I might, that's one worth getting tattooed. <laughs> um, let me do this next one here. We got verse two, which says, A bastard shall not enter God's congregation even to his 10th generation. And the bastard, I mean, the bastard himself, like he didn't do anything wrong. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? Yeah. Yeah. That is just crazy. Also, yeah. another thing that it shows is that God is always insistent upon the sacrifice, the animals that are sacrificed to him being without blemish. If there's any, you know, if there's any problem with them at all, then they're not good enough for God. And so it's, I guess he's just kind of grossed out by, by people with, you know, <laughs> deficiencies. Imperfections. Or imperfections. Yeah. 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 Almost like God's really into like a master race or something. Yeah, I don't know. Is. Just yeah. the, weird stuff. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, it's not a great look. No, it isn't. Okay, so verse three. Because the Moabites hired Balaam to curse God, an Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter God's congregation, even to his 10th generation. But God wouldn't listen to Balaam and turned his curse into a blessing. Okay, I'm confused here. Oh, yeah. yeah. God wouldn't listen to Balaam. God, yeah. Balaam was supposed to curse God, uh -huh. but God it didn't end up he didn't that do happened. It. Yeah. Okay. But he still gets blamed anyway and killed for it, even though he didn't do it. But we'll Balaam. just go on. Yeah. Yes, that is crazy. Okay. So, Steve, you want to take verse six? Okay. Don't seek the peace or prosperity of the Moabites. Oh, so the Moabites are on God's side or against God's side? Well, it's kind of weird because the Moabites are descendants of Lot and his daughter. 
Remember they had, mm-hmm. oh, they yes. had sex there. And one of them was called Moab and yeah. uh, they, the Moabites have descended from this. So they're, they're, they're kind of special to God because God liked Lot for some reason. I don't know how, but he did. Even though he had sex yeah. with the daughters and these are really his children. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. What, in fact, that's why, because uh-huh. of that. The two things here that are very subtle, but important to point out, because I talked to Christians who say, well, the stories, particularly that in the Old Testament, are just that they're stories they don't refer maybe to literal events. Maybe they're stories that we have to obtain. But like the actual text and yeah. the justification for these rules is very specifically citing like a what they inter- interpreted to be a historical event saying, yeah, because of Balaam, because yeah. of what Balaam did, we can't do this. <laughs> so it's like, OK, I don't think the Jewish people mostly believe all of it was stories. I, I really I mean, like, obviously, a lot oh, of yeah. Jewish people now will interpret that. But like it, the text at this time, at least seems to say like yeah this was a this was a, the real deal you know and even if there were stories they're messed up stories right they're they're sure. vile stories and, sure. and, and for the most part and so why would you if i were god and you're just making some stories about me and and you made up stories like like the, the stories that we have in the bible i'd be pretty offended by that um i guess i'll do the next one okay um oh i my second thought other thing that was subtle um saying you can't have the moabites in your space You know, I mean, what if I said, you know, I don't want blacks in my space, Yeah. right? Like, that's racist, Uh (laughs) you know? What is the equivalent? I mean, this is what it is. It's like saying, oh, we can't, we don't want Turkish people here or something, right? Like, no, that's that's what that is. They're saying they're not good enough for God, uh, oh, a nation of people. So, um, yeah, it's kind of messed up. Yeah, (laughs) it is. Yeah. Uh, But anyway, um, so verse seven here. Don't abhor the Edomites because they are your relatives. Don't abhor Egyptians because you were a stranger in the land of Egypt. Their children may enter the congregation in their third generation. So in other words, not the ones, you know, directly that were originally there. Yeah. But the third ones down the line, All they're right. good. <laughs> yeah. You know, Gra- grandpa, dad, no. not going to make it. Grandkid, yeah. sure. So. Yeah, that is Looney too. All right, verse 9. When you go to war, keep away from wicked things. If a man is unclean because of something that happens to him at night, oh, yeah. he shall wash himself with water. Huh, what do we think might yeah. happen to a man at night? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not great. Uh-huh. It's not, again, it goes back to this idea of like cleanliness, right? You have to be clean when you enter the temple. Yeah. And they're really obsessed with that. So. Yeah. Okay, verse 13, put a paddle on your weapon and use it to cover your feces when you defecate. Yeah, so uh, what? (laughs) (laughs) And and there's a good, there's a reason for that. Go ahead and read the next one and and you'll get it, Dan. Yeah, okay, all right. It says, because God walks through the camp and if he happens to see some unholy clean thing, he might turn and walk away from you and no longer fight for you against your enemies. Okay, sure. So basically, <laughs> if God what? says you, I there's shit on the ground. <laughs> yes. I'm out. Like peace. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. <laughs> wow. You and your dirty shit it, are not going to get in, my blessing. Entire geopolitical conflicts completely turn the tide because some guy didn't use toilet paper right uh-huh. and just left it out. Like that's it. It's really crazy to think about. You know. Yeah, it is. All right, so don't return runaway slaves to their masters. Let them live with you in peace and freedom. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I wonder where the Civil War era Christians were on that one. I don't know. Uh, I guess they didn't hear that. Yeah, they yeah. Blacked, it out, blacked it out of their Bible. It would be interesting yeah. to see how that did enter into the debates back then. I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with it, but I'm, I'm sure it did. Mm-hmm. You know, my understanding is, of course, I mean, obviously, right, the American South was full of Christians, full mm-hmm. of people, and I, they would look towards the New Testament, uh, specifically in 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 uh, Paul's letter to, uh, I believe, is it Titus? I think so. Who, yeah. talks, who talks about, like, who is a slave owner, who is saying, slaves obey your masters, right? Well, and Jesus, you know, uh, also meets with slaves and doesn't say, hey, let them go. Mm-hmm. So, like... 
interpretations of slavery throughout Christianity kind of muddled. A lot of them will say, oh, it's always been this way and it's never been okay. But historically, that's just not true. Like it was totally okay for some Christian sects. So, you know. Mm -hmm. So verse 17, Steve. Okay. Don't bring any whore, sodomite, or dog into the house of God. For these things are an abomination to God. I don't think the, the only one I'm sure about there is they're not really talking about dogs here. Although I don't think God particularly likes dogs. No. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I think the dog is a, is a term that is a, uh, to denigrate someone. You know, uh -huh. It's a slur. I know that like, Muslims, Muslims don't use Muslims the term don't, dog. No. Yeah, um, and they don't like dogs either. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like to think that God's like, ew, Yorkshire Terriers, get that out of here. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Like. Yeah, no. Uh, so, yeah, for these things are an abomination to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't charge unreasonably high interest when you loan money to another Hebrew. But usury is okay when you do it to strangers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, take care of your own. Yeah, basically, that, that's what it comes down to, you know. Can yeah. I can I get the last one? Yeah, get to wrap it up. Yeah. Okay, so we got verse twenty one, which says, "If you make a vow to God, you must keep it." Uh, doesn't say what the consequences are if you don't. I'm assuming a stoning. That's usually or fifty shekels. <laughs> yeah. um, Take your but, yeah. Yeah, you how much is your it. life worth? Right. <laughs> now this is interesting because I mean it does say it doesn't say you can't make a vow. No. to god so you can you can vow making vows are cool uh -huh. i guess there's a lot of christians that don't think that's a good thing um but it says it right here so yep. i don't know yeah and some people made vows in the in the bible we'll see later on that were just horrible mm -hmm. vows you know like jephthah yeah uh, he, mm -hmm. um, i don't remember jephthah well we'll find out about that <laughs> in judges when we get there but it was pretty horrible and he made a vow and he had to keep it oh Jephthah is the guy who he was one of the judges of Israel, and he right. he was uh, getting ready to go out on a and fight a, a war. And he said that if you will deliver one of one of one of their enemies into my hand, I will sacrifice. See, I'm spoiling judges. I will sacrifice whatever I see, whoever comes out to greet me when I come home. And it turned out that his daughter came out to greet him. Oh shoot! And he had to sacrifice his daughter to God. Right, because he made a vow. Right. <laughs> underrated book book of judges you don't hear enough stories yes from there. yes there so. are a lot of really crazy stories and judges mm -hmm. just one after another yeah. <laughs> so maybe we can have you back on uh, to do a uh, i would love to go through the book of judges. because judges. when i was <laughs> yeah my my deconversion process right yeah um i like i i realized i never really read the book of judges as a christian like uh -huh. at all i don't know yeah. if anybody that really taught me story. i mean maybe you know delilah and Samson, yeah, right? Samson, that's uh -huh, some judges. Right. But like, besides that, I don't think I knew any stories. And that's a and crazy that's like story one of the too. craziest books of the Bible. Yeah. In Judges. You yeah, just he, see the craziest stuff. So. Yeah. Even the Samson and Delilah thing is pretty darn crazy. You know, that's also crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, invite me back for that one. That'd be good. But thank you guys so much for having me on today. This was fun. Yes. Uh, the, probably the, I'll say this this is the funnest reading of the book of Deuteronomy I've ever had because. <laughs> Um, you know, usually it's not a very fun book to read. So there you go. Yeah. Hey, Dan, you want to tell us just a little bit about um, what your shows, how they go. And uh, if our readers want, or our listeners want to join you, how do they do that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Truth Wanted it's live every Friday at 7 p.m. Central. And it is a call in show. So if you want to talk to me, you certainly can. I also uh, host Talk Heathen and I will be hosting this Sunday uh, which is live at one o'clock central on Sundays. Uh, so yeah, that's where you can mostly find me. Check me out. You can also follow me on Twitter at objectively Dan. So and there you go. That's, that's my plugs. One of the shows is called talk heathen, right? Talk heathen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's my other show that I, that I host on. So, all right. Well, that sounds great. It sounds like you're busy. I, you know, I keep busy. I keep busy, uh, between th doing this show and all the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely that's great um okay so i think that um we're done okay. anybody want to add anything here no i think i'm good done. you're done we've had a lot no, of variety uh, yeah i gotta i don't know i gotta figure out my shekel to usd conversion ratio uh, <laughs> so see find what that out looks how much like a woman's uh virginity is worth 
Yeah, because yeah. like you know, I I got to see if, is that going to matter with like my four hundred one k and stuff, <laughs> right? Do I got to like plan around that? I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah, let All us right. know about that. Yes, yeah. let us know how it turns out. Okay, listeners, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.